Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel, and that is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And today I am here to do a book review for The Last Gifts of the Universe by Rory August, and this is one of our self-published science fiction contest finalists. I was very excited to pick this one up because I saw that it was shelved as a space opera, which is my favorite subgenre of science fiction. And it is, but it has a secondary theme running through it. We're going to go over the plot just quickly. Scout and their brother Kieran are a archivist duo. Scout is more the archaeologist and Kieran is the tech person are traveling through space with their cat pumpkin and they come upon a world that has a cache so I guess I should back up in their universe all they their society is the only one that exists only one all, on all these other worlds they find a dead societies but dead in such a way that no biological matter is alive so there's no trees there's no animals no other sentient intelligent creatures they're all dead but you can't even find like the evidence of them except that sometimes they leave what they call caches which are electronical records those seem to survive so scout and karen up in their spaceship find a cache on planet, they go down to retrieve it, and lo and behold, somebody else is also trying to get it, and two people working for Verity Co. named June and Gunner, who keep popping up in the story. It becomes a race to try to find all these caches. And then Verity Co. is a company from their home world who also goes out searching the universe for knowledge, but when they get the knowledge, they put it behind a paywall. So you have to pay in order to access it. And Scout and the Archivist believe that knowledge should be free. So of course, June and Gunner from Verity Co. are better equipped. They have stealth items. And so in this race, they are have an advantage. But Scout has the brains and can put things together and knows how to find the cache beyond going into the what looks like the main building on each society. And why Scout and Kieran have decided to continue pursuing this race is at the first cache, they activate a Hello World message from Lyrena, who is mentioned in the synopsis um, the, of the book, where she is talking about her last stand. Because the aliens are coming. And Scout's like, oh, last stand. That that means they know how to fight off the aliens where they have more information. And so that is Scout's impetus to be like, no, we really are going to be trying to get all these caches, even if we might not have the better equipment. And then as you go along, you get what's happening with Scout and Kieran and are cut with the recording of Blyrena because they got a partial copy even though they didn't get the actual cash themselves. So Scout has been listening to Blyrena. And at first is very confused why is Blyrena talking about Ovalen, the man that she loved, and then comes to realize that Blyrena's last stand does not necessarily mean the same thing that Scout thought it did. But interwoven in this is also Scout is dealing with their grief. Their mother died shortly before they came on this mission, and they aren't happy with how things went down. And their brother is there and also grieving in his own way. And so that's why it really mirrors Lyrena's last stand. She's talking about her husband. And then we have Scout grieving for their mother. Pro, this is a normalized queer society actually both from Scout and from Lyrena's, both are normalized queer. I'm trying to think of some cons here. Like, I really, really enjoyed this book. A con, but 
again, not really is, I didn't really care for Pumpkin, the cat. I understand the purpose and how Pumpkin played into the plot as everything went forward, and it makes sense. Just, yeah. Pumpkin was okay for me. I know other people are going to disagree, and I absolutely love Pumpkin. I'm just not a cat person. So I do have to agree with June as cats don't belong in space. Well, if they, I want to be on the spaceship, that's fine. But don't take them out down onto a dead planet while you are possibly going to be fighting for a cash or whatnot. A pro for this book is the relationship dynamics. We get to see different relationships between siblings, between parent and child, between partners. And each of them have weight and depth. You can tell that Rory August is very adept at writing characters. I love the sibling dynamic that she had between Kieran and Scout, where they know how to push each other's buttons, but they also know where to forgive one another and to give them space. They know what is going to make each other feel good, but they also know when they need to do something that makes themselves feel good, even if their sibling is going to be upset. And it, that was a beautiful dynamic, especially when it, they're the only two intelligent creatures. I don't even know if you can call them human. I don't think they're actually described. They could be another alien race and we wouldn't actually know because to them they're normal. And so they're just describing another race as different. But August does a great job showing those family dynamics that I thought were just wonderful. So I don't know if this would fall under a con or a pro, but at first, Scout's grief over their mother dying sort of got on my nerves. And I know that might sound mean to say, since I have not had my parent die, the closest relative I've had die is a grandparent. And grief is something that I think is hard for people to understand until you've actually gone through the experience. And so I was a little annoyed by the constant grief that we were getting from Scout. Like everything just kind of kept being felt like way down on that story. And at the first I thought that was detracting from the space opera until you go further along and you realize, no, it's really interwoven. Especially as you come to realize what Blyrena's last stand is. And especially when Blyrena shares Ovalin's last stand, I, I highlighted those passages because they were just so beautiful. Trigger warnings of grief, death of a parent, or dealing with that death of a parent. You do eventually see a little bit of that in flashbacks later on. But if you're going into the story just looking for adventure, I don't think it's going to work for you. You need to keep an open mind and realize that you have the adventure going on at the space opera, but you also have the dealing with grief and family relationships on the other side. To end this, I am looking forward to seeing what else Rory August writes. I think that they did an amazing job here and I really, really loved this book. This is definitely one I want to share with other people who like sci-fi, especially when they like sci-fi that is not more quote-unquote mainstream. If you have not picked this up, I do suggest it. Thank you and have a great day.